Hey everyone. So um, in the normal API call I used for Zoom to get registrants, um, I just had it, I was being lazy and I said, hey, if there's uh you can have up to a hundred at a time per page on each call. And for a long time, we were easily below a hundred. So I said, whatever, it's fine. Although I did build some logic to say, hey, if it's over a hundred, let me know that, don't, you know, don't just stop going because uh, I need to know that. Um, and right now we're getting very close to it. So I asked for Isaiah's help to adapt this call to where if there is over 100 that we go and get the next page and i did this by the way by creating a because I, I was everyone has all their email addresses and phone number or sorry names so i created a, a, a dummy meeting with five registrants we dropped down the the people per page to two and this way there really should be three pages so and this is where we are exactly. So basically what we're going to try to do is uh, I have never worked with this kind of thing with the API Zoom uh, from Zoom. So how would you go about and getting an idea of how how would you work with something that you have never seen before, right? Now, um, the, the, the first thing is obviously a, the API uh, for Zoom must be documented somewhere. So the first thing you would do is just open up a web browser and go ahead and look for uh, API Zoom, and I found this page where they have the document uh, already there, the documentation, right? Yeah, right. So that's the first thing you want to do. If you don't know what you're doing in this particular case, I have never worked with this with this API. That's the first thing I, I would go. Now I know that he's talking about meetings, and here on the left, they tell you different types of things that the API handles, right? So I would go to the meetings, which is what we're looking for, and Reading, I noticed that we're talking about listing the registrants. And just to make sure that I got the correct thing, I am looking at this particular link right here. You see that? And I went to Joe's code and I was able to see that right about here. So I, I know that I'm in the correct location. This API is the one that he's using. And now I just want to know what can I do? So what he says is that, if there are multiple pages, I want to get everybody, right? Sometimes I, I don't know how many pages there are. And there's something in most APIs right now that is called pagination, which allows you to have multiple pages with information. In this case, we want multiple pages of registrants, right? Now I see that he built his page size here to be two participants per page. That's what it says here. Um, just by looking at it, I could deduce that. But in any case, you can go down here and it tells you, um, for example, in your request parameters, the right? So, right. So here where it says request parameters, those I'm are things. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I just noticed here they opted. It used to be 100. Now it's 300 is the maximum. Oh, it's, wow. There you go. So now the, the, the maximum is 300. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but in any case, there you go. So, I'm looking at the request parameters because that's what you send to them. So right now he's using a, 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 a query, right? That is going to be sent to the API. In this case, this QS is being sent as a parameter to the API, API call. And that is usually called the, the request. And after you do the request to the server, they answer you back. That's the response. So. I'm looking at the request parameter. I see that I know the page size. That's the one that he's actually looking at. That is there, so page size. But there's another option there that it says next page token. And this is the pagination. Usually when you want to have different pages, when you send a request to the server, when they answer you back, if there are many pages, they send you a, talk, a token for the next page. And that's what you would pass on your parameter. So what I want to do is just grab the first page, grab everybody in there. Now the next page token, I'm going to send it as a request for the second page. So every time I work with one page, I make a request for the next page. That's what I'm thinking about. So I make my first request, work with the response. And when I work with the response, then I make another request for the next page. And that next page is here. That's where I specify where I want to do it in the next page token. So the first thing when he told me, like, I want to see different pages, the first thing I said, like, okay, we have to see if the API allows you to do pagination. 
It does. Where do I put the pagination? Well, as you can see, I put page size two here and they tell me that page size and next page token are on the same request parameter. So I would just put it right next to it. I just put a comma here because we're passing an object. I think I deleted something there by mistake. I would just put there um, next page token, right? And I would pass the next, the token here. Now what is going on is that this query is the first one I'm passing, but this token, I cannot pass it on the first one. I have to pass it on my next calls. I'm just gonna keep it there as an example and I'm gonna move it to where I need it later on. That is here when I go ahead and verify um, one of the loops that we're gonna be doing because I want to go through each page, right? And that automatically tells me I have to do a loop, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. When I get the answer, this is my code. I get my records and there it is. This is my next page token. This is what I was looking for. I get my registrants for that page and then I get my token for the next page. So that's in my response. Okay, so I know more or less how that works. Now let's go ahead and think about the, the code. I make my first call here. Um, my query, I just want this call to be done over and over again until I get all the pages. So what I'm thinking is if, right, I know that my response, so this ends up as a response here, my API ends up as a response. If registrants dot, and then we get um, next page token. And I would say not. So if I don't get a next page token, then I can just go out. But I could do it another way. Let's make, it's a little bit easier to think like, while there is a next page token that makes it positive for me and it makes it easier for me to understand let's do all this every the first time one doesn't the first okay. time doesn't have one but anyway no yeah. Uh, yeah yeah don't worry that's that's one thing that i'm gonna right now so my query string doesn't have anything right now i want to build this query string every time i start now I know that this guy is going to contain my next token. And if I pass it as a parameter there, the first time is going to be empty. So it's not going to do anything. My query is going to be empty for the next page token. So it's going to start with the first one. And when it does have one, then it's going to do the next one, right? So um, I think with this, I should get more or less what I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and think about it. Okay. The is line 10, huh? you're, you're getting the results there, but on seven, when is it checking? How would right. seven be updated? Very good catch. So okay. basically, this is never going to be true, is what you're saying, right? Right. Very good. Now, this is the thing. Whenever you're doing a loop, which is like that, you have to make sure that your, um, that your variables contain something at least the first time, right? right? So, exactly. Now, what we could do, either or, we can make one call up uh, here at the top, or what some other people do is just make a while loop um, that is always true, and then just break out when you don't have that particular option. So, that you could do. Uh, either or, I really don't like the loops, the, 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 um, infinite loops because uh -huh. they they bring a lot of issues right away but for the for this demonstration let's just go ahead and do that right so we could start here with true and if not token so i don't have any token then let's go ahead and break that's it so now let's think about the idea so it. what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead and break my program here. I'm going to start running the program and I'm going to go ahead and see what happens. Kill, um, uh, kill line one. Oh yeah. 
and then you won't have the yeah you won't have the single for instant force either but um i'm sorry hold on what well my single instance force is inside my include so you might want to add that oh yeah okay right so uh we're calling a non-existent function. Oh, well, because you're using VS Code. Oh. It's, it's not using my default. Oh, okay. So let's go ahead and do that on the other. Well, the reason why I wanted to do this is that I wanted to step through the code, right? So let's just go ahead and include it. Just hold on. Yeah, okay. Should we good now? We've got to save it. Yeah, when I run it, automatically it does that. So now we have the parse JSON. So here's the deal. Instead of doing that, you should have a file that you can just include it, like that file that has all includes that you that you need. But um, yeah, yeah, because now now I need the parse JSON file. Oh, right. Parse JSON. <laughs> yeah, that's very very complicated. Or, or I could hold on. Can I can I just include that library? That's the path. Um, right. So just just include that library, right? So I would do like include. I just include the library, and now whenever it asks me for something, I just include it like that, and that's it. It should should work out. So object to string. So. Uh, no, no, no. I just wanted to. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, things that you have this uh, duplicate line. Oh, no, right. So now we have here. Um, what was it? Object uh, to string to string. Let's try it. Right, there we go. Um, so now I'm going to go line by line just to see if my logic is correct, because usually when we code like this very quickly, your logic might fail. So very good just to go step by step. I know that I'm going to be reading the INI file. I have my meeting. As soon as I read it, this variable should contain my meeting number. So that's good. Now my endpoint says everything is good there. So now we enter a, a, a very dangerous loop now. now when we go here, uh, that's the problem. You see, my logic is, <laughs> so, yeah, the logic is maybe do it at the end, right? So first do the first call and then check if it is not there, right? We're, we will see how this is gonna be. So that's the reason why I don't like the, the while loops and stuff. Um, I think you do like an until while loop until I will check on that. There is an option that we could loop until something is not true. Right. right. So we could do that um, instead of doing what I'm doing, which is just a hack. So let's go ahead and do that again. We go enter. Now we have our registrants. Now, the reason why I wanted to do it this way is because now could take a look at the object itself. Now we have a next page token here, right? Now I'm gonna get my uh, for loop in there. I'm gonna break outside of that loop. So I wanted to do everything, right? That grabbed my information. I don't see it, but okay. And now I have my next token. I do have a next token, so it's not going to break. Now it's going to continue with next one, right? So now we're going to continue. Now my next page, and this is my, I passed it as the token, right? I should get, let's see what I get on the registrants. Now the token changed. I could see that the change top, the token changed. And now I have, so I have job lines there. Oh, so all of them are going to say job lines, right? No, if you expand it, so that see it has the plus two. Um, so there's oh plus yeah, two. so okay, 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 okay. 
So this one is going to be plus three. The other one is going to be plus two. Okay, fine. So we do those two. Okay. And on my next, I'm still on my next page. And now when I get my next registrants, yeah, there it is. My next object is joke lines plus one. Now I do this part. And now my next token should be empty. And now it should break. So now it should break the loop and I'm done. Now this script, let's run it on, uh, on site so that we could see its output, how, how you're used to. So can, let's go ahead and go to, or oh, well, ISK Studio, right? Was it here? There we go. Okay, there we go. So can you run it? Um, uh, yeah, that's my new- Here's the funny thing. Look right. down below, look at the bottom. Oh, so you have it. <laughs> so now you have- We talked so, about this the other day, right? Oh yeah, right. So it connects to the object. It doesn't matter where it is. It just goes ahead and send it. Right. Very good. So now, as you can see now, you have the five people, right. even though you're doing the pagination. So very right. quickly, I knew what I was gonna, what I was looking for, right? So why? Because I went to the documentation and I got myself on the correct position by getting the correct query reading and de deducing okay if if it is a request and i'm sending page size and right next to page size i have the next page token in the documentation because that's what i'm talking about so if in the documentation here you see that page size and next page token are on the same place then in your code they cannot be too far apart they should be very close to each other right so that's how i just determined that I had never seen this before. And what's interesting to me, which I, I did, because I, sometimes this will fail, passing the the next page token the very first time, I was like, well, wait a minute, it doesn't have one on your very first call. Like, right. know, is that going to break it? But it, it didn't. No, it doesn't, because if it is empty, it says, well, you didn't pass anything. I'm going to send you the first page. Now, I do have a question, and it is because um, we were talking about probably, hold on. Probably when you call this right now, and let me just one second on the documentation, we had this little thing that says that um, total, what was it? Page number, page count. Yeah, but the this guy. So this page count tells me exactly how many pages there are, right? So instead of an infinite loop here, which is a while loop, right? I could just use loop right? And it is just going to be for registrants page count, right? I could do that, well, but I have to make the call first, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. So I would have to do the court first, have a call outside. Yeah. So I would have this, like my call outside would be, let me see, hold on. My call would not need the next page token because I don't need it. Right. I just need the page size. And um, I just need the page count here. Now, I didn't see that in the object. And that's no. the reason why I want to check right. on it. So right. what I want to do is just run it, right? And I can go on my code step by step, right? So let's see what happens. Let me see if I get my registrants object. So I have my registrants object. Now I want to see if there is no. So I, I've got the total records, I've got the page size, I've got the next page token, but I don't see page count. Right. So it looks like for some reason, even though it is documented here because they tell you, right? That there is a page count on the response, right? What's really wild is the, page number says deprecated, but the one we're trying to use is not deprecated, right? So it, for some reason, and that's the type of things that then you have to figure it out, right? Um, I would have to figure it out because if I'm expecting a page count, but I don't get it, it might be, and now that we're dealing with an API, it might be a problem without a hotkey, but it might be a problem with the API as well. So you would have to say, well, maybe it is a problem that they have it is something that they're working yeah. on or whatever. First thing I would do is actually display the the, the, res, the the total response instead of shoving it into the right. object like we do. Now, so, right. so basically, uh, and this is the funny thing about the reason why I wanted to do this is because now um, I can just simply make a break 
down here and I see my response text right here. Right. So I could just go ahead, let me um, remove all my breaks. So let me go ahead and make sure that I remove all these breaks, right? This is the funny thing about, you know, when you get used to this thing, oh, I want to know if this works. Yeah, you can, you just break on the code right here. And now when I go down, down, now always, you always have to kind of like, um, um, how do I say this? execute the line before for it to work you cannot just simply <laughs> try to see something that hasn't been executed right now for this guy when i go to the response text it's another response text uh let me just one second oh this is a as this is a com object i cannot see it myself but um that's going to convert that into an object right there yeah, it's going to convert it into an object, so I cannot see it. Maybe the parse JSON is the one that is failing. So what I'm going to do instead of... Oh, hold on. Hold on just a second. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay, so just um, one other way that I could do this without actually kind of like breaking the, the, the thing. I cannot control your screen any longer. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, uh, now, 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 it, now it says like, now I, but I cannot do anything. Do you have something open in there? No. I'll grant your control again. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Now you should be able to. I'm no? trying to stop it, right? I'm trying to stop it and I cannot do anything. That's interesting. Well, anyway, we were going to peek inside that variable. Right, right. that's the only thing that I was going to do. So basically, um, let me just say it. It doesn't have to be shown. Okay, so in this case, um, what we could do, even though I, I, I'm suspecting that the that one of the functions is not showing me the HTTP response text completely, right? So what I could do is just use output debug and that would show it down here on my console window down here. So I could just know what the response text actually was before the function actually used it. Because right. maybe the function modified it in a way that we don't have access to some things, but I would just send an output um, debug just to see what it is and see if it is correct that there's something missing. Because right here, what is going on is that there's something missing. One, of, one very important thing actually. Hey, but that's it, actually. Real quick, quick question, um, and maybe this is kind of crazy, but could we have stored the 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 next page token as a static variable inside the function, and then as it comes back when it's blank, then it just breaks inside the function? Like no. we never would have had to pull it out. No. 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 Uh, the, those tokens, I think, they're completely uh, dynamic. So they are hashes of information. So if uh, the next page token that you get this time is not the same the next time you call, absolutely right. right. So I then maybe I didn't understand the question. Then. Well, we would we, then it would just replace it. We'd replace the value, and then when it's suddenly broken, I'm just saying is, do we really need to pull it out? To do the comparison could we have broken it from within you know right after this no i cannot i'm not seeing your screen so but right now i cannot i i see everything stuck don't worry so, about it. right um, but cool thanks for walking through that um, not a problem um next time we're gonna take a little bit more time to figure out some other things but i think with this you get an idea of how to start when you have no information whatsoever right well it was more about building a recurring you know a recursive kind of query um i thought we were going to have do it a little tackle a little differently so um but but it still breaks down to you need the way to monitor what you're calling to have a final way to say hey stop hey we're good stop <laughs> right um and yeah. it was just the way you went about it was just a little different than what i was thinking expecting we were right no well those are different ways to do it and uh, again there are different for example what i was saying like with the while until or with a while loop, an infinite loop, whatever. There are different ways for you to do this, but all the same ideas apply. That if you if you go ahead and have pagination, you just have to go each page at a time. Right. You cannot do unless you first do the pagination. Uh, again, it's the the problem is that the next time you call the API, 
the pagination that you saved is not going to work out. It's going to be different, yeah. right? So, so then each time you grab a page, you enter into a page, work with the with the data, then you call the next page, and it's always the same. It's just the same idea. It doesn't matter which loop you use, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be talking later. Yeah. Bye.